600 Boko Haram suspects are due in court as a series of trials begin. Liberia is gearing up for tomorrow's election and what is believed to be a historic change of power. And the United Nations says Mali has made a good progress on peace in the country. Welcome to the program. I'm Millicent Walker. We begin the program with stories that made headlines over the weekend, from the recent explosion in Ghana to the sanctions in Sudan to the forthcoming elections in Liberia. In Ghana, a natural gas station exploded on Saturday evening in the nation's capital, Accra, killing at least seven people. Eyewitnesses say the explosion began at a state-owned Goyle liquefied natural gas station, spreading to a total petrol station across the streets at the city's atomic junction. Officials say more than 100 people were injured and many others evacuated from the area. The United States on Saturday lifted most of the economic and trade sanctions it first imposed on Sudan two decades ago. U.S. officials said that Sudan had made good progress in counter-terrorism and human rights issues. However, President Omar al-Bashir still remains wanted by the International Criminal Court and the country remains listed as a state sponsor of terror. In Liberia, political parties held final rallies ahead of the first round of voting in the country's presidential election on October the 10th. This follows 12 years of President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf's rule, the first woman to be democratically elected in Africa, inheriting a country battered by a 14-year civil war. The election will be the first democratic transfer of power in Liberia since the 1970s. The first of more than 1,600 suspected Boko Haram militants are due to appear in a series of trials scheduled to start later today. Most of the defendants were arrested in the last few years as the Nigerian government stepped up its campaign against the Islamist militant group. Boko Haram has been fighting for the last eight years to overthrow the government and create an Islamic state. There are at least 7,000 suspects being held in different locations in the northeast of the country who are expected to face trial in the coming weeks. To date, a small number of people have been tried and convicted for links to the insurgency. Well, joining us now via Skype is a former International Criminal Court prosecutor, Mr. Charles Adeogun Phillips. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's a trial of an insurgency that has cost thousands of lives. What should we expect? Ah, interesting. Um, well, there are many procedural issues that um, have to be addressed in the first place. And one, one, of those, one of the main things that comes to mind is whether or not these will be single accused trials or whether or not these will be joint trials. That's the first point. The second point also concerns the fair trial rights of the defendants. I understand from the media that the Legal Aid Council will be providing the defendants with uh, legal representation, but then the question is, what is the quality of such representation? So that, that clearly affects the fair trial rights of the defendants. Another point that I see is that the trials are, are alleged to be held in secret. Now, um, justice not only has to be done, but justice also has to be seen to be done. And that actually aids the reconciliation process. Now, the, the secret trials in themselves, albeit necessary for security reasons, may be seen as an impediment to the fair trial rights of accused persons who have a right to, 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 to have their trials conducted in public. So there, there, there are quite a, a range of issues that range from fair trial rights to the aspect of the principle of inequality or equality of arms, as it were. 
So, with regards to what you just said, you know, with regards to secret trial, do you think that that was a wrong decision made by the government as well as the intelligence agency when they came to that conclusion with regards to security issues that would be dealt with? Well, the, the, the issue of secret trials clearly is predicated on the assumption that there might be um, some aspects of national security that may be at risk from the evidence that may be adduced at trial. But the lack of openness in itself jeopardizes the fairness of the trial to, to the defendant. And of course, I, I take the view that several international observers have been invited to, to observe the trials. Um, but then it's, uh, that in itself is not enough to guarantee, in my opinion, the fair trial rights of those defendants. And I'm a little troubled about the, the secret nature of these trials. What are your thoughts with regards to witnesses? Will there be witnesses with the suspects in court? Well, that's, that's part of what I say when I talk about the inequality of arms. The, 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 principle of inequality, uh, the principle of equality of arms is that both sides have access to the same amount of resources to present their cases. Now, I, I, I'm troubled by the fact that some of these defendants may not, in, a, in reality, actually have access to enough resources, whether that be provided by themselves or by the state, to be able to mount an effective defense in, in, in this situation. And that is why I say um, the fair trial rights of the accused as guaranteed by Section 36 of the Nigerian Constitution may be at risk here. Okay. So it would be right for me to say that perhaps you have a bias with regards to the trial. Um, innocent unto proven guilty, I mean, that's going to be the case here, isn't it? that a just and fair trial will be processed, knowing fully well that over 700 of them were released to the Bornu state government uh, as cleared after interrogations and several investigations. What are your thoughts on that? I'm not, I'm not terribly convinced that the judiciary, whether nationally or in terms of Bornu state, does have the capacity to prosecute 700 persons. Um, where, where, in terms of the logistical challenges, I mean, are they going to try 700 persons in one trial? Are they going to have a series of trials? There are so many questions that are left to be answered. What sort of trials are these going to be? Are these going to be joint trials? Are they going to be single accused trials? Where are the lawyers coming from? Where is the evidence being generated from? Is there forensic evidence? Is this all confessions that have been beaten out of various defendants? There are so many issues that I, as a criminal rights, uh, human rights lawyer, um, are troubled by in this, in this regard. If found guilty, what do you think the punishments will be under the Terrorism Act? It could be anything from life imprisonment to substantial prison sentences. Um, there, there are a range of offenses that they might be charged with under the Terrorism Act itself, and one needs to be able to read the charges to be able to understand what the penalty, the applicable penalty, will be in, 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 in that respect. I haven't seen the judges. Do you think Nigerians will be satisfied after this ends? Not if the trials are in secret. The, the, the openness of trial aids reconciliation. Like I said at the beginning, justice not only has to be, not, not, not only has to be done, but it has to be seen to be done. So conducting trials in secret cannot aid reconciliation, in my humble opinion. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Charles Adegun Phillips, uh, former ICC prosecutor, for coming on the program. Thank you for having me.